Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Design Palette and I am back again today with another video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at a brand new tool released by Adobe for creators. It's called Adobe Premiere Rush. Now Adobe Premiere Rush is a video editing software that aims at helping content creators edit videos on the go. So you can edit videos on your mobile device, on your tablets, and even on your desktop computer. You could say it's the mini version of Premiere Pro. And a lot of people have been waiting for this to finally be out for everybody. So without any further ado, let's get started. So this is the Premiere Rush website. I think I'm just gonna call it Adobe Rush for now. Premiere Rush sounds like a pretty big name for me. But anyway, um, you can check out the video over here. And as I told you earlier, it's available for PC or your Mac, uh, for your mobile device, which is only iOS at the moment. They're working on releasing the Android version next year somewhere in the early 2019 and also it's available on the iPad as well. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at a full fledged overview of everything Premiere Rush offers. So it's going to be pretty fun. Now the trial version of Premiere Rush uh, allows you to have three exports and uh, the paid version which comes along with Premiere Pro. So if you buy the Premiere Pro subscription, Rush comes along with it. So you don't have to separately purchase Premiere Rush, which is very good. And every file of Premiere Rush can be opened in Premiere Pro if you guys want to do any further editing. So let's open up Premiere Rush and get started. All right, so this is the user interface of Premiere Rush and this is just two separate videos uh, project that I had made earlier, but let's start afresh. So we're gonna go ahead and click on create new project. Now this is the place where you can select all the assets that you want in your project. It could be audio files, it could be video files, any kind of files, pictures, images, uh, you name it. And you can obviously go and select it from your directory but for this purpose, I'm going to be selecting uh, these three. And as you can see, as I select one of the element, uh, it kind of numbers it. So what Premiere Rush does, it automatically imports and puts all the assets in the sequence of your selection. So this is going to be the first clip, second clip, third clip, and fourth clip. All right. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and select this one as the first clip. Uh, let's actually deselect everything. This is going to be my first clip, this is going to be my second clip, and this is going to be my final clip. And then we've got some audio track over here, which we have. And you can go ahead and name the project. I'm going to call it YouTube Demo Video, just for sake. And it shows you all the assets that you have taken, which is pretty good. And if you want, you can also go ahead and, uh, you know, sort it by name or date creator and also put in a filter. So once we select this, we can go ahead and click on Create. All right, now as you can see on the screen, since I have the starter plan, it allows me to get three exports. So if you guys go on unlimited exporting, then obviously you'll have to purchase the subscription. Anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and close this so we can start focusing on this. So this is basically the, the editing interface. Uh, it's pretty simple, very straightforward to use, nothing complicated at all. So this is the plus icon, which allows you to import a title, a media, or a voiceover, which is again to importing your assets in case there are any other assets that you did not select when importing. Now this is your media bin or the project panel where you can, you know, drag and drop all your assets from onto the timeline. Uh, so that's that. And now we've got some editing options over here, which is let's select one of the options and let's see, we have the option to cut, which is splitting the clip. And it also shows this uh, shortcut, which is control K. And then we have an option to duplicate. We can delete and this uh, allows you to expand your voice frequency so you can uh, see better. Now zooming in, you need to hold on alt or option your keyboard and you need to, you know, scroll to view your clips in the expanded mode, which is basically zooming in. And here we've got an icon with control track, so which allows you to get control such as locking, muting, and hiding or unhiding uh, the visibility of the track. Simple stuff, just similar stuff, just as in Premiere Pro. Now you can also click on uh, the uh, audio track over here, and if I click on this, it's gonna expand that for me, and it's gonna collapse it the way you want. All right, so let's see how, uh, let's take a look at a couple of things over here. So as you can see, this is the video, so if I just click on play, and uh, it plays it. All right, it's playing the audio as well. All right, pretty good. Now, this intro is too long for me, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shorten it. So I'm gonna come over here and press Control K on my keyboard, which is going to delete, which is gonna create a snap over here, which is gonna cut the clip. And when I select this and I hit delete, what Premiere Rush automatically does, it pushes all the other assets after the cut 
to the beginning of the timeline. This is not how it works in Premiere Pro. You would have to do a ripple delete function or select the empty space and hit delete. But Premiere Rush fixes this issue pretty good. So that's one cool thing that I wanted to mention. The next one is we can have the uh, uh, option to change the orientation from landscape or you can change it to portrait uh, which should be proper for Instagram stories or we could go ahead and choose it to square which could be for an Instagram you know, post itself. So let's keep it for landscape right now. Now, of course, if you go ahead and change it to portrait, we can obviously scale these. I'm going to show you that a little bit later, but uh, let's keep it to landscape for now. And this option is loops, and this is to view it in full screen, which is super full screen. And let's click on it to go back again. All right, that's uh, pretty good. So you can see on the top right over here, we have uh, kind of an indicator or a progress bar, which is kind of um, loading. So it's basically trying to load all the tracks onto the timeline. So we don't have any issues when playing that. Uh, it's gonna do a thing, but we can just ignore that. Uh, we've got some two options, which is undo and redo, and we've got an option to give feedback. So if you guys have any feature requests, just click on the icon. It's gonna take you to a website where you can put in your feedback and all the features. But anyways, let's get into more editing part. So over here, I need a title for the video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this button, which is gonna add in a title for me. Okay, so now it's gonna open up a panel where I can select pre-built uh, templates, which I can just drag and drop and use. Uh, let's actually go and select all over here and you can also import them from Adobe stock as well if you guys want that and also you have an option to install a template now for those of you who don't know what a Mogurt file is so as you can see it says motion graphics template it's basically a custom this uh, custom template that is designed with the essential graphics panel uh, you can check more about it on YouTube or Google I've not done a video on that earlier but it's basically like a pre-built template that can be used across After Effects, Premiere Pro, and Adobe Rush right now. So uh, it's pretty cool. So we have a lot of templates over here and what we can kind of do is we can go ahead and you know just select any one, which is this one, a basic title on a background. So I can go ahead and just drop that and it's gonna open that up. And let's quickly play this and see how this looks. Yeah, uh, it's pretty basic and default, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some few uh, edits to this. So I'm gonna go to the edit in the title. Uh, I'm gonna, I have the ability to change the font. So I'm gonna keep the font the same. And as you can see, it says add Adobe fonts. Now this is something new. Basically, it's not new actually. It's actually Adobe Typekit itself. The name has been changed from Typekit to Adobe Fonts. Anyway, so I'm just gonna leave the font to the default font. You can change the size, character spacing, and all that stuff. We've got outline, curve fills, shadow, and you know, we've got some shape. Uh, this is basically the outline. So if I go ahead and you know, add in an outline and increase the size, uh, you can see what we get. We get this kind of a nice, neat border. And let's go back to the title over here, and I'm gonna call this My Movie. All right, uh, pretty simple. Now, assuming that I made a lot of changes to this and I want to use this in my future videos, I can go ahead to this and click on save template as, and it's gonna save it as a template and I can just rename it whatever I want. I'm gonna click on save and uh, it's gonna save it. So if I go to my styles and come right down, it should probably be over here. It's gonna take some time to load that up anyway. We also have the option to set a few of these as favorites. So if I you know, select probably this one as a favorite, and this one as a favorite, I can import them later on by going over here and choosing my favorites. And there you go, we have these two uh, presets set to favorite. Pretty cool. So the next one is transitions. So transitions are very important. We've got only three transitions right now, but uh, it would be better if uh, the guys over at Rush could enable users to create their own transitions or import transitions to add whatever transition they want. So for now we can choose cross dissolve. So I'm gonna drag the cross dissolve onto the clip or you know, even if you ha even if you don't wanna drag, you can just select the clip and you can click on the uh, effect and that's gonna add it over here at the end. Let me control Z that uh, and let's zoom in so if you guys uh, wanna see it. So, okay, so there is no transition. All you have to do is just click on it and it's gonna add in the transition for you, which is pretty handy. Uh, this is something that I really like. So let's take a look at uh, how this transition feels. All right, there we go. So we've got some guy talking over here and uh, it's gonna end off with, uh, you, know, the, uh, you know, the transition of him speaking to another clip. Yeah, pretty good. So the next one is color correction. Now we've got a bunch of presets over here. 
all right and uh, we could probably choose whichever preset we want so if i come over here we can go and choose the cinematic one and i think maybe that's too harsh we can go for film or sl kodak or sl fuji uh, SL Kodak looks pretty good. You can also go ahead and change the intensity depending on how intense or low intensity you want. And even you can go ahead and edit each and every element such as the exposure. So let's uh, probably leave the exposure. We can increase the contrast. Uh, we can increase the highlights or probably reduce that. The shadows, we can reduce the shadows a bit. Temperature, we can change the temperature. Uh, tint, all right, uh, something like that. Vibrance, let's make it a bit vibrant. All right, and saturation, we could increase the saturation a bit. And there you go. So we we can even increase the sharpening and even uh, add in the faded film effect. So I'm gonna leave this to zero. Vignette, uh, also a simple thing. So we can decrease that to add in this kind of a vignette and we can add a little bit of feather. So we added a lot of things and this button allows me to turn off the color settings, which now I can see how it looked before and how it looked after, right? Before and after, pretty good. I can even go ahead and create a preset and I can call this YouTube uh, preset and click on OK. And that's gonna go ahead and save it as a preset. It should be over here, there you go, YouTube preset. Now, if I click on this, I wanna apply the same effect. All I have to do is just click on the preset and boom, it's applied. We can do the same thing over here, apply the preset and boom, it's applied pretty fast and pretty simple of uh, doing color corrections. Very sleek. So let's go ahead to the audio section. Now this is the most interesting part uh, because audio can really affect the quality of the video even if the video is really high resolution. So it, to, make, to make it a good video, the audio has to match the video and you know the sound and it has to sync with the audio and stuff. So anyways, this is the basic, uh, the volume uh, clipping that we have. This is simple basic stuff. You can go ahead and mute it if you want. And in the advanced section, uh, this is something pretty interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, expand this. Now, as you can see, when I click on this voice, we can go ahead and we can see that uh, Adobe Rush has automatically understood that this audio is basically a voice. So it selected it as a voice. Now, if I click on this track and it shows me that it automatically recognizes it as a music track, which is pretty cool. And um, we can have a couple of options over here to customize. We can auto volume, so it kind of synchronizes the volume of the entire track. Yeah, balance sound does a little bit similar stuff. Uh, reduce background noise, obviously reduces the background noise. You can, you know, we can change the intensity. We can reduce echo, which is really handy sometimes, and also enhanced speech. Now, if your person is a male, we can go ahead and choose male and uh, you know it, it's gonna uh, uh, enhance that so once we have all this we can go to the channels and this is basically your channel you can listen to the left and right channel separately in case you want to uh, for any reason so now let's listen to this entire thing i'm probably going to increase my volume so you guys can hear it much better and then i'm going to show you a cool feature so let's play this All right, so we could hear that. So we, what we can understand is the audio is overpowering the voice of the speaker. So we wanna fix that. So we have an option called as auto duck. And when I click on it, it's gonna do its magic and we can uh, change the settings, the parameters or the intensity of the auto duck. What it, what it does, it, it's gonna reduce the volume of the audio track when the person is speaking. So let's take a look and see how this sounds now. All right, so there you go. It automatically reduced the volume when the person started speaking. We can even come over here and we can uh, play this. You can see this kind of uh, a bump which shows the volume being raised automatically when the person stops speaking. So let's play that again. and it automatically increases the volume, which is pretty awesome. This is one of the best features that Premiere Rush has at this point. Now, once we have all this and we are almost ready to export it, we can go to the transform sections, which allows us to change the horizontal position, you know, the vertical position, uh, rotation, and so on and so forth. Simple basic uh, transform properties and also scale. So if we go ahead and we can set the orientation to portrait, we can go ahead and scale the width uh, pretty good and we can come back over here and since uh, this one also is not there 
we can, uh, where was this? was 196. We can set this to 196 again. And you can see that, you know, kind of looks pretty good. We also have advanced settings where you can use to crop uh, in case you guys want to add in an aspect ratio you're, because you're trying to create a cinematic uh, look with the aspect ratio bars that come at the top and the bottom. You could definitely do that. Probably there should be a preset to automatically add that onto your videos, but right now it's not there. So you would have to manually go ahead and add in your crops. Obviously we have the opacity as well and the edge feather. So once our video is almost ready to export, what we can do is we can go to the share section. And here you have the ability to share to five platforms at the same time. So you can save it to your local desktop. You, you can save it, you can upload it to YouTube. You can upload it to Facebook, Instagram, and Behance automatically. All you have to do is just name the file, choose the destination. It shows you the estimated file size. You can go to the advanced settings where you can choose whichever preset you want. So for local, you can set it to YouTube 1080p. The good thing is also it allows you to export in uh, 4K, which is awesome because a lot of people shoot in 4K. Resolution is going to be 1080p uh, because I have because these videos are 1080p. We have the audio channels and also the quality as well. We can set it to high, low, or medium depending on whatever you want. And if you go to YouTube, you would probably have to sign into YouTube. If you go to Facebook, you'd have to sign into Facebook. Now, when you're saving it to Instagram, you can't upload it to Instagram directly. Uh, you'd have to export the video and then share it from your phone. Uh, so as you can see, if I want to save it to Instagram, we get this issue. So I can go to the resolution and set this to automatic, which is 1080 by 1920, which was the composition size or the sequence size or the project uh, dimensions. So, and it's going to crop that to uh, the Instagram story size. Pretty awesome. And also we have Behance as well. So similar stuff. And all we have to do is go ahead and click on export and we are good to go. So that's pretty much it. The basic overview of Premiere Rush CC. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like on the video. If you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comment sections down below. And I'll definitely see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.